Welcome all to another interesting, intelligent and important lecture of physics from GGP. So today we will uh, start our topic gravitation and the first part of gravitation uh, will discuss about this Newton's law of gravitation. So everyone might be knowing what is Newton's law of gravitation. It states that every particle in the universe attract all other particles with a force which is directly proportional to the product of their masses and uh, inversely proportional to square of distance between them. That means if you are considering uh, two masses, let's say one mass is m1 and another one is m2 and these were uh, separated by a distance, let's say that is equal to r. So over here basically we are uh, considering that there are two point masses m1 and m2 separated by a distance r. So the force of attraction, gravitational force is always attractive in nature. The force of attraction between them is directly proportional to product of their masses. So you can write f is directly proportional to m and m2 and it is inversely proportional to square of distance that is r square. So you can write this force f is equal to a constant g into m1 m2 divided by r square. So where this g is known as nothing but uh, universal gravitational constant. Uh, we'll discuss about this value and other things related to this universal gravitational constant in detail. But just remember that uh, this equation that is fg m1 m2 by r square is valid only for point masses. For an extended object we cannot directly use this equation. Let's try to understand uh, what is the meaning of that so that when we are solving some question you will not make uh, any mistake. That means suppose if you are having an object something like this, let's say an object of mass uh, m1. It's not a point mass, it is an extended object, let's say some object like in rectangular shape. And another object over here, let's say it is having a mass thickness that is equal to m2. And if you want to find out the value of force of attraction between these two masses, so assume that uh, the center of mass of the m1 is over here, and center of mass of m2 is over here, and these two masses m1 and m2 were separated by a distance, let's say that is equal to r. And if you want to find out the value of force of attraction between them, then you cannot uh, directly take the distance from their center of mass and you can write this equation as f is equal to g m1 m2 divided by r square then this equation is not correct over here for an extended object we cannot use it directly but only for a spherical shape object that means if you are uh, having a sphere over here of mass let's say that is equal to m1 and another spherical object over here let's say that is its mass is equal to m2 and if you want to find out the value of force of attraction between them, then we can assume that the total mass is concentrated at the center and the distance between mass is taken as let's say that is equal to r. So over here we can use this equation f is equal to g m1 m2 divided by r square. So that's what uh, I'm saying that uh, this equation is valid only for a uh, point size masses or for spherical uh, symmetry. Then some students may get a doubt why it is not uh, valid for a, a normal extended object and why we can't take it from the center of mass. But only for a spherical shape object why we will be able to take it. This is because of the uh, reason that uh, there is a gravitational direction of gravitational field. That means if you are uh, considering a rectangular shape object which is something like this. Then the uh, direction of gravitational field may be uh, something like this and all these gravitational fields are not basically pointing uh, towards a one particular point. So we cannot say that all these gravitational field lines are appears to be originating from a single point. But if you are uh, considering a spherical shape object, if you are considering a spherical shape object, then uh, we know that the direction of gravitational field or we'll discuss in later, that is the direction of gravitational field will be something like this. So here all these gravitational fields are appears to be concentrating at its center or at its center of mass. So here you can assume that the total mass is at the center only for a spherical shape object, other shape of object we cannot take it directly. So remember this important point, this formula is applicable only for a spherical symmetrical masses or four point masses. For another object we cannot directly take it and we cannot write it. So some students may get a doubt if it is an extended object then how we will find out the force of attraction between uh, these masses. So just take uh, an example for it. That means suppose if you are having an extended object, uh, let's say an object uh, something like uh, this. Let's say an object something like this. Let's say an object of mass m1. And if you want to find out the gravitational force of attraction between this m1 and another object of mass, let's say that is equal to m2. So first we need to uh, find out a small element over here of mass let's say that is equal to m 
and assume that the small element is at a distance x from this mass m2. Then we can find out what about the force of attraction between these two uh, small element of mass dm and this mass m2 point mass m2. So we can write this df that is a small force or a differentiation of force is equal to g into uh, this m2 into small mass that we selected dm divided by x square. Like that we need to divide this one into infinite number of small dm part and we need to find out the value of force exerted by each and every small part and we need to add it. So we'll get the value of net force exerted by the entire object of mass m1 on m2. So we need to take small element then we need to find out the force exerted by individual element and we need to add it. The addition process is known as nothing but integration. So integration of gm to dm divided by x square will give the value of force uh, acting on it. So no need to worry about how we are going to uh, calculate uh, or uh, how we'll do the calculation for such type of questions. So we'll take some example for it. So if there is a question, they will give some particular uh, constraint or some relations by using that we can find out it. No need to worry about this calculation part. We'll discuss in some examples or we are not going to will not get such a type of questions where such a complex uh, integration part is coming now just uh, discuss about the value of universal gravitational constant as we discussed that the value of f is equal to g m and m2 divided by r square where this g is known as nothing but universal gravitational constant now just remember that uh, the uh, universal gravitational constant is a scalar quantity that means uh, it is not showing any particular direction and its value is for calculation purpose we need to remember this value that is 6.67 into 10 raised to minus 11 newton meter square kilogram square that means uh, suppose if you are writing the equation for this g so we can write g is equal to f into r square divided by m1 m2 so the unit of force is nothing but uh, newton unit of uh, distance is nothing but meter so newton meter square and the unit of mass is nothing but kilogram so we can write kilogram square so it is newton meter square kilogram raised to minus 2 is the unit of this universal gravitational constant and same unit uh, we can write in dyne so if you want to write the value of uh, g in si system then it is 6.600 raised to minus 11 and if you want to write the value in cj system it is 6.67 into 10 raised to minus 8 dyne uh, centimeter square per gram square and if you're talking about its uh, dimensional formula so for its dimensional formula we can try this is dimensional formula force that is m l t raised to minus 2 into distance that is l so r square it is l square and mass we can take it as uh, m so it is m square so it's going to be m raised to minus 1 and l raised to 3 and t raised to minus 2 so this is the dimensional formula for g so you can write the dimensional formula of g is nothing but uh, m raised to minus 1 and l raised to 3 and t raised to minus 2. Now just uh, remember that the value of g is uh, a universal constant and it is uh, same at each and every point in the universe. It not depends upon the nature and size of bodies. So irrespective of nature and what type of material the force of attraction between them will remain constant if the mass is same and it's not going to be affected by the medium between them. So G does not depend upon the nature and size of bodies and does not depend upon the nature of medium between the bodies. That means if uh, uh, two masses are in air or in uh, the water, the force of attraction between them will remain same if the mass and distances are same. And the value of this G is uh, first found by the scientist uh, Cavendish with the help of a torsional balance uh, experiment. Just remember these things related to universal gravitational constant. Along with that, uh, just remember the basic things related to gravitational force. This gravitational force is attractive in nature. That means if you are having a mass m1 and another mass m2, so always this m1 is going to attract m2 with the force f and m2 is going to attract the m1 with the same force f. So we can say that there is uh, equal and opposite reaction forces. So it is obeying Newton's third law also. So gravitational force is always attractive and uh, gravitational forces are developed in the form of action reaction pairs that means this is you can take it as action this is a reaction so that's going to obey newton's third law and it is independent of nature of medium between them as we already discussed that as the universal gravitational constant is not depends upon medium this force of attraction between masses is also not depends upon the medium and it's not depends upon the medium uh, other than that's not depends upon the presence of other masses also 
Next point is uh, the gravitational forces are central forces and uh, they act along the line joining the center of gravity of uh, two bodies or exactly where uh, the force of gravity is concentrated is known as nothing but uh, center of gravity. So sometimes we'll use this word center of gravity and center of mass. You should not get confused. What is the difference between that? Center of gravity is a is the point where the net gravitational force is acting and uh, center of mass is a point where the total mass is assumed to be concentrated. Next one is the uh, gravitational force are conservative forces. In topic work power energy also we discussed in detail about that this gravitational force is conservative and we discuss about that gravitational uh, potential energy also in this chapter also we'll discuss about that gravitational potential energy. So as it is a conservative force we can discuss about potential energy and uh, so work done by gravitational forces not depends upon the path. If it is a conservative force it uh, depends only on the initial and final point not depends upon the path followed by the uh, forces. Next point is the gravitational force uh, hold good for uh, wide range of distance and it's found true in uh, like uh, interplanetary distances also for an interatomic uh, distances. That means if the distance is very high or the distance is very small then also we can use this uh, gravitational equations. And uh, if it is two bodies interact then gravitational force between two is independent of uh, the presence or absence of other bodies. So if there is some other particles may be there but the force of attraction between masses will not change. That means if there is a mass m1 over here, another mass m2 over here and if there is a force of attraction between m1 and m2. Suppose if you are keeping another mass m3 over here, let's say m3 over here. So this m3 is not going to make any difference to force of attraction between m1 and m2 that will still remain just that uh, f. But this M3 can exert some external forces, but the forces of force of attraction between M1 and M2 is not going to change because of presence of M3. So just remember uh, these uh, important points related to gravitational forces. Hope so that you understood whatever the things we discussed in this class. If you are having any doubt, please feel free to ask. Thank you.